Good morning cultists, welcome back to another Unbalanced Breakfast with Cthulhu's. Let's continue on in tyranny as we are currently looking for the person who killed uh, Dea's wife and someone who's been spreading rumors about Gino. So let's I guess, talk to the merchants, find out about Gino. Good day to you, might I interest you in all manner of provisions? Who knows what you'll run into outside of Lethian's Crossing? What can you tell me about Gino? Not much really, he's been acting on edge for a while now. Some people have said he cut a deal with a local authority to uh, have his comp competition disappear. Who told you Gino cut a deal with the authorities? I think Helena told me. She might know more about it. Why would Gino want to get rid of the competition? Well, that's a stupid thing to ask. Okay. Times have been tough all around since Lethian's Crossing became an occupied settlement. A lot of merchants will use any means they can to get a leg up on the competition, but working with the local garrison to take out your fellow merchants is against everything we Tearsmen stand for. Cool. Random girl with a British accent. Who spoke? Was it Helena? What the hell is Helena? Helena. Donde esta Helena? Maybe you got something to say? Tell me about Gino. Doesn't know anything. Cool. Glad I didn't voice you. You there, tell me about Gino. Doesn't know anything either, fantastic. Maybe Helena's over here? There you are, Merchant Helena. Fine day, my friend. Might I interest you in my wares? I have all manner of goods I know you need. What do you know about Gino? Gino? Why would you want to know about that reprobate? Helena shrugs. I was told by someone who saw, saw the bodies that Gino killed the other fishermen in the village so he could get a lug up and that he paid off the occupying uh, army to look the other way. Who saw the bodies? Gino's younger brother. Allegan was the one that told me about the bodies. He's been telling people about it in the hopes that someone would come into town and do something about it. Okay. You're being backstabbed by your own brother, Gino. It's a little, uh, Cain and Abel kind of situation over here. Brother. Killing brother. Babies. Having babies. Eldian, what do you got to say? Got questions. And that's nothing. Fantastic. Glad you could help me, Eldian. You dithering old buffoon. Absolutely the most useful person that we've talked to ever. So far. Perfect. Could not be happier. Oh, I forgot to mention, today is Christmas Eve. So, hope you guys are, you know, gearing up for a fantastic Christmas and uh, holidays and whatnot. If Christmas isn't your thing, then at least, um, it'll be holidays around the world-ish, kind of? Maybe? I hope so? Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the holidays. Um, Please stay safe during the holidays and whatnot. As we talk to Gino. And they discover about these dealings with bodies that he's uh, apparently involved in. Gino? We're here to celebrate Christmas with you. Greetings to you, Fate Binder. What can I do for you? Allegan is the one spreading the rumors. Gino's face turns dark red and his lips thin. Thin into a, uh, to a line. Why? Why would my brother do that to me? Um. He says you paid off the occupying army, occupying army to look the other way when you killed some men. Gino's face tightens further. His arms begin to shake with rage. It was a bane attack. They are nothing but husks now. I have no reason to kill anyone. Well, why should I believe you if I don't know your side of the story? His posture stiffens as his rage turns into a bitter fear. Fine. He looks around for anyone in the vicinity. It wasn't a bait attack, okay? His voice becomes almost a whisper. It was a group of disfavored soldiers burying up a, a group of those shaved heads, staff-wielding assholes in the chorus. Show him your map. Where are these bodies? He points out a spot in the map in, the, uh, in an area in Twin Rivers that is behind a group of overgrown bushes on the southwest end of the area. Perhaps if you find the bodies, it would legitimize my side of the story. 
Okay, well, we need to go to Twin Rivers anyway, so that's... Kind of a stroke of luck-ish, maybe? Or maybe it was planned by the developers. Who knows? Dun, dun, dun. Actually, the developers probably know. Twin Rivers. Fantastic. Let's get over there. Ah. The holidays. People feeling better. I've got things to say. Can't do that. Apparently not. My character knows me better than I do. What can we do here? So we can ford the river. Um. Is that in fact what we want to do? Where's this place that Gino said that, um. Our chorus bodies and shit? Gino, did you lie to me? You son of a bitch. You best not have lied to me, Gino. You best not have lied to me. Where the hell is... Oh, there's Sandro. Let's talk to Sandro over here. So I guess if we don't have the athletics, we can't even talk to him? Sandro. What voice do we give him? Stay back! My mom! Clad in uh, piecemeal leathers. The sweaty man sizes you up, relaxing slightly as he reads your features. I don't like that voice. Please, leave me be. Uh, leave me be, please. I'm sick and wish to be left alone. I don't wish to speak to anyone right now. You seem nervous. Not ill. Indeed I am. I can't stomach it anymore. I thought I'd get used to seeing people die, but the Brotherhood and their raids, there's just no end in sight. He kicks at the soil, his hands idly playing with his necklace as he... As his feet shuffle anxiously. I just... I just want to be away from the folk of the crossing right now. You're someone oddly dressed for a Bronze Brotherhood mercenary. He looks down at what he's wearing. Oh, this. I, I'm not actually a Brotherhood soldier. He stops for a moment, gagging... Uh, gauging your reaction. Is that how you spell gauging? It, it was the only way I could see to get out of Lethian's crossing alive. Day I was trying to find me. I, I thought it best to disguise myself as a Brotherhood sellsword and then follow them. I found a dead brother and uh, donned some of his armor. I didn't really have time to figure out how to put it all on, but it worked well enough to get me here. I know you killed Dea's wife. What? You must be joking. I, I would never... His mouth moves, but no words form as he steps uh, back a pace. It's a lie! His eyes dart about in uh, the many directions he could run. Um. Alright, well, tell me your side of the story. If you're innocent, you have nothing to fear. For a moment, it seems as though he's going to follow through and tries to get past you with a cry. He sinks to his knees. Please! I didn't do anything! May Cairo strike me down if I'm lying! He trembles, pull, trembles pitifully. I didn't kill Phaedra. She did! It was Dea! Dea said you were with the Brotherhood and that you killed Phaedra. She said what? Sandro's face blanches. His eyes widen in surprise. The Brotherhood? Absolutely not! Do I look like I could even lift an axe without hurting myself? He reaches for his head, fingers dragging into his hair. I saw her. Saw Dea kill Phaedra. She killed her own wife and blamed... His head slumps. That motherless trollop is trying to frame me. Why would Dea kill her own wife? How should I know? Dea was never happy to be with her. She wasn't happy that Phaedra and I were friends. Phaedra never should have married her. I told Phaedra if it was a bad idea, but she wouldn't listen. Now she's dead. If you and Phaedra were friends, why would De uh, Dea frame you? He takes a long, deep breath. Because I told Phaedra not to marry Dea, and she has always hated me for that. Phaedra and I have been friends since childhood. We promised to always be honest to each other, even when it hurts. When Phaedra left to live in the Bastard City, I stayed in Lethian's Crossing to keep an eye on things for her. Then Phaedra told me she'd fallen in love. I was initially happy for her, but when she brought Dea back to Lethian's Crossing to meet me, I could see right away that Dea wasn't interested in Phaedra aside from what Phaedra could offer her. Um... If you're lying by omission, I'll personally toss you into the dungeons at Bastard City. Alarmed, Sandra throws up his arms to stave you off. Please, have mercy! See, uh, Phaedra, well, she was Lethian's granddaughter. As Lethian's only known female heir, she inherited the land that Lethian's crossing sits on. But she didn't like to make a fuss about it. She just did what was needed to ensure the future of the town and left it at that. 
He looks on nervously and whispers. Daya, on the other hand, wanted more. I think she'd tax the merchants till near their breaking point if she was able. You're saying Daya mar married Phaedra for her land? Essentially, yes. I, I don't think Daya ever loved Phaedra. She's always had other motives. Phaedra was head over Kairos in love. Head over... Let's just say head over heels. That's, that's just silly. Was head over heels in love with Daya. She was charismatic. Always knew what to say Phaedra to, uh, say, Phaedra to make her smile. But as soon as Phaedra's back was turned, Daya's fangs would shut to, uh, start to show. In a matter of speaking, I mean. When, why should I believe any of this? His shoulder slumps down and a defeated look uh, crosses his face. I don't have any proof. All I can trust is that, as a fate binder, you know what I'm saying is true. Why are you wearing Phaedra's necklace? This? He touches the simple uh, turquoise medallion around his neck. It's mine! Phaedra bought it for me in Arden ten years ago. Sandro looks about. Did Dea tell you this was Phaedra's necklace? That's absurd. This necklace is a symbol of friendship that Phaedra and I had. Okay. Hmm. How about I tell him that I'm going to try to fool Dea. Give me the necklace. I wish to fool Dea. Sandro eyes you with suspicion. She's li she lies about me, so now I should lose my necklace? The one that Phaedra gave me? He grabs a turquoise uh, medallion, runs it between his fingers for a long moment. Fine, take it. If it brings Dea to justice, then it's worth the price. Alright, well, let's see what we can do to, um... To trick her, which isn't, uh, I guess, the lawful, evil kind of way about things, but, eh, whatever. Since there's no concept of lawful or chaotic, I guess, eh, maybe it doesn't really matter too much. I don't know. Where the hell are these damn bodies, though? Bodies buried southwest region. Okay. So, in this area is where it should be. Right? Oh, is it in there? I think it's in there. I see. I see how it is. Okay. Look at the loose dirt. Dig it up. Beneath the dirt, you find a collection of bones wrapped in tattered crimson rags. A shining medallion bearing the insignia of the blood chanter order rests among the bodies. Markings on the bones indicate these blood chanters were killed by the iron weapons of the disfavored. These blood chanters were killed long before we took Vendrian's well. It would seem the disfavored and Scarlet Corps started their, little, their feud a little earlier than we thought. Well, that's kind of expected, isn't it? Where's Elagan? Elagan. Elagan? Elagan. Let's go over to Sunset Snow. Yeah, to Lethian's Crossing. Confront Dea and Elagan? And we're back. Sorry about that. I had to take a short little break. But we are back. And we are currently looking to talk to Allegan. Is that you? Where's your brother? Allegan appears visibly shaken by seeing you in the flesh. F -f Fate binder, he stammers. How good to see you. Where's Gino? He's out fishing. Uh, he, he didn't want to speak to me. He said he needed some time to think. He scratches his arms. Y you didn't say anything to him, did you? I know you've been spreading false rumors about your brother. Allegan's face pales and he takes a small step back. Uh, how, how, how do you know they're false? I saw the bodies myself. They're Scarlet Corse blood chanters, killed by disfavored. It was a simple mistake, Allegan protests. How could I know if they were Scarlet Corse members or not? I had no choice, Fatebinder. Allegan backs away. Please, I have family to take care of. He turns and starts to run away. He didn't turn. He's running towards me. What's going on here? Oh, no, oops. <clears throat> What's going on here? Allegan is working with a disfavor to smear your name. Gino's eyes. G G Gino eyes? Where's the possessive? Gino's eyes glaze in a bitter rage. Why, Allegan? After all these years, why? The shout echoes throughout the settlement. Allegan shrinks in place. 
his knees wobbling in an increasingly difficult effort to keep him from toppling over. F father always favored you. Always pushed me around. I, I just wanted to chance to run things for once. Chino's face grows still while his lips remain as the only thing in motion. And you never will. Be gone from here, Alagan. Never show your face again. Alagan's lips tremble in a failed attempt to mutter a reply, but eventually falls victim to the weight of his head as it droops down. He picks a small sack nearby and slowly scampers off. Okay. Thank you for settling that horrid affair with the rumors. Unfortunately, my name means nothing in the crossing. Perhaps you, as uh, Tunan's fate binder, can speak to Eldian on my behalf and clear my name. Well, you want me to do you more favors? Come on, man. Fine, I'll, ma I'll make no promises, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. Now let's go talk to uh, Dea. The wife murdering scum. Ya scum sucker. Get over here. I don't I don't even need to know why you did it. Probably just killed it for your own for your own gain, did you Dea? Have you settled my blood debt? Dea's voice trembles, her body wearing from sobbing uh, sobbing from sobbing. The killer has been eliminated. Here's the necklace. My love, you are avenged. She clasps her hands over the necklace, holding the trinket to her cheek. After a moment of silent thought, she takes a deep breath and looks at you with a smile. And you almost got away with it. Away with what? What do you mean? She gives you a puzzled look. That's preposterous. I, I couldn't... Dea's face turns from flush to stoic in a blink of an eye. She's a psychopath. She folds her arms before her and smiles. Well, mount me sideways. I thought I always, I thought I'd gotten away with it. She looks down at her feet. Can't blame me for trying, though. A sly smile crosses her lips. You know, Fatebinder, with Fader gone, I have inherited everything she owned. Perhaps there's something I can offer you, should you decide to leave things be. Make me an offer I can't refuse? Athletics 59? Wah wah wee wah. Could it be? I doubt it. I don't think there's any of that kind in um, any of uh, Obsidian's games. But anyways, let's uh, ask her some questions. Really? What else could you want to know? Why hail a Fatebinder when you were the one who murdered your own wife? I thought that would have been obvious. If I was the one who flagged you down, you'd be less likely to suspect I was the one who killed her. I was hoping you'd just take my word for it and kill Sandro for me, but apparently he didn't have a mind to keep his mouth shut. And why did you kill Phaedra? Living with Phaedra was insufferable. Always so happy and smiling. Like nothing bad had ever happened to her in her entire life. It drove me crazy. I was happy with her at first, but over time it wore me down and I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted to show her that life can be mean and cruel, so she'd stop smiling all the damn time. The dead do not smile. Why well, kill Phaedra now rather than later, uh, earlier? I wasn't originally planning on doing it myself at all. Phaedra was supposed to die when the Ky when Kairos' armies came to Lethian's Crossing. That was the only reason I actually married uh, the little halfwit. I met Phaedra in the Bastard City. It didn't take long to learn that she owned a sizable piece of land. I courted her for a while, and then Kairos invaded the Cheers. By that time, I had Phaedra right where I wanted her. She was desperately in love with me and wanted us to be together forever. But she wasn't willing to marry me just then. So I stayed with her as we traveled around and eventually settled here. Kairos' forces followed soon after. Her armies quickly occupied Lethian's crossing and subjugated the town. Phaedra was gravely injured that year. I didn't think she would survive to see the next season, so I convinced her to marry me before it was too late. She agreed, and for a time I thought it would all work out in my favor. She'd be dead, and I'd own the town. But obviously, she recovered. Thanks to Sandro, he wouldn't leave Phaedra alone. As her friend, he was determined to nurse her back to health, and the fucker succeeded. Over the course of a few weeks, he destroyed my years of planning. Wait, 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 wait. how do you know Kairos is a woman? I don't, but I'd like to think she is. Between her power and my huge tracts of land... We'd make a great couple, don't you think? She smiles coyly. Yeah, because Kairos clearly doesn't have enough tracks of land, right? No, it's not like he or she owns the entire freaking world. Anyways, so you had to change your plans. 
I thought of many different ways to remove Phaedra from my life, but none of them were good enough to absolve me of any potential guilt. When the Bronze Brotherhood attacked, I figured it would be a good way to disguise my involvement with her death, but Sandro saw me. That little worm ruined everything. I had to deal with Phaedra's body before I could chase him down. By the time I was able to locate him, he had put on some uh, Bronze Brotherhood armor and was following them out of town. Okay, well let me ask you about something else. Sandra told me a rather interesting and different version of events. She scoffs at you. You are a persistent one, aren't you? Fine, as you probably now know, Phaedra was the granddaughter of Lethian, which means she essentially owned Lethian's Crossing. Every month she would collect from the merchants and use the rings to maintain the market areas for their use. She only ever collected enough to cover the needs of the marketplace. She never considered that we could use those rings too. I told her to raise her rates than that the merchants could afford it, but she refused. Those filthy merchants all live better than uh, lives and all live better than we, I do. There are other ways to make rings. You only say that because you're a fate binder. People practically throw rings at you to solve their problems. She tips her chin defiantly in the air. Now that I own this town, I can char uh, charge whatever I want. I can finally have the life I deserve. The only thing I still want, uh, still in my way, is that worm Sandro. Um. Uh, let me ask you about something else. Yeah. Why was the necklace so important to you? It's not really. I just wanted it as proof that Sandra was dead. I was going to keep it around as a trophy, a reminder that in the end, I won. Um. I don't want to let her go. I guess we attack her? I've heard enough. You disgust me. Okay, we gained wrath with Lethian's Crossing? Why? That's stupid. That's real stupid. That's unfortunate. She slides her hand up her, to her ear, pulling her from, pulling from her hair a long slender pin. Brandishing the makeshift weapon, she throws herself at you. Well, not the way that I hoped she'd throw herself at me, but you know what? Eh. Heads off to the company. I guess That's we'll just kill instead to release our pent-up frustration. Fantastic. Got Dea's necklace and a numbing agent. Will do. Great. Drugs and a weapon. I guess we talk to Eldian, see if we can... Uh... Oops. See if we can uh, solve that... Issue of um, Gino's reputation, I suppose. Get over there. Nice. Eldian, talk to me. Do something useful. Right. I was hoping you'd clear Gino's name. I am the elder here, Faithpander, but my words only hold so much weight. Without any evidence to the contrary, why should people believe one story over another? I've seen the bodies myself. There were Scarlet Chorus members butchered by the disfavored soldiers. Gino is innocent of the claims against them. And if this is the case, how in the tears did the other story even start? Allegan was working with the disfavored to run Gino out of town for witnessing them burying the bodies. You've done something wonderful here, Fatebinder. The needs of a small, weak man placed before your own. You're truly a wonderful person, and a force of change for the tears. I will tell the other merchants and settlers the truth of the matter and clear Gino's name. I'm not a nice person. No, I go around rampantly killing and murdering and brutally just stabbing everyone in the face. Whatever chance I get. But the law is the law. And, um, you know... When I, if it's possible for me to wrest control from Kairos and for me to become the next tyrant, then I want people to follow my laws. That's the Sorry. only reason why I'm doing all this, right? I guess we talk to Gino again, or is that, is that it? Are we done with that quest? I find sometimes there's no clear conclusion to quests. Like... The quest with Dea, is it done? Do we go back to Sandro? Greetings to you, Fatebinder. Have you spoken with Nul Eldian to, yet to claim my name? I did, and he was said he would speak to the merchants. Thank you so much, Fatebinder. Now I can hold my head high in town again. 
Let's see what you have. Right this way. Can I sell you some shit and then you pay me more? Is that how this is gonna work? Please tell me that's how this is gonna work. I don't think I'll need all these gems. I think they're just useless stuff, right? Fish merchant, fish merchant. Give me some gold. Now you're now a gem merchant. Congratulations, you've been promoted. Uh, maybe we should go back to um, Twin River? See if Sandro's still there? Possibly? Let's do it. Six hours, really? Take six hours to get there? Holy crap. That's insane. That seems a little excessive, but... Maybe they're just taking like a extremely leisurely stroll to uh, twin, twin Rivers from Lethian's Crossing. Like super leisurely. Basically crawling. They're crawling. Literally crawling to the um to this place. Please tell me Sandro's here and that we can conclude our dialogue? Quest? He's still here, fantastic. Okay, Sandro. Have you solved my problem? Am I safe now? Day is dead. You're free to return to Lethian's Crossing if you choose. Oh, thank you. This is wonderful news. I didn't know what I was going to do otherwise. Where's my reward? You ain't giving me jack shit, son. Give me some goodies. You bastards. Oh, you jack and I ain't giving me jack shit. You lazy, good for nothing. Scum suckers. I guess I should have just crossed the um, thing from here, but eh. A couple less clicks, right? So let's go to Ashwheel, I guess. Speak to Bled and Mark again. Um. Or actually, if we if we're going to the Sunset Spire, let's just go up there and make sure that everything that we have, all our stuff in order, um, so that you know we're researching stuff and whatnot. Can you make some stuff for me? Oh, I guess they've completed forging the item? Your recruits have been hard at work. Let me show you what they've done. Um, okay, so you got me some ingots. Fantastic. Good job, I guess. I don't know. Can we upgrade some stuff here? Can't upgrade that. Can we upgrade this? Uh, you know what? That's actually not a lot of, um, rings now. Wait, is it bronze? Oh shit, it's bronze. I thought it was uh, copper rings for a second there. I was like, yeah, that's cheap. That's chump change. But it's... Hmm... Not exactly chump change. But sure, let's do it anyways. It's a, it's a helmet. I think it requires. Fantastic. Well, what about this one? Should we upgrade that? It does give a fair bit to... Um, to upgrade there. So, although it's going to require more iron, so maybe not. It's fine. Uh, what do we have with our spires here? Is this Fendrian's Well? Blade Grave? Lethian's Crossing? Can you forge something for me, maybe? Something cool? I don't think any of them are really all that cool, which is kind of unfortunate. Let's go to our library place. Where is our library place? Place. Is that the Ocean Spire? Yes, it's a library. Fantastic. And I think there's also something inside there that we can probably access that we haven't been able to because we don't have the correct key, if I'm not mistaken. What's the status of your research? Great, we've got more scrolls and a recipe for old water, apparently. Cool? I guess? I don't know. Doesn't seem all that interesting, but... Hey, what do I know, right? Journal entry? No. These are useless? Cool. Okay, well then, um... I want you to research something. Silent Archive? Sure... I guess? No, you know what? Yeah, sure. Re research some artifacts. Fantastic. 
And let's go over to... Actually... Is it the... Old Walls Breach that we want to go to? Or... Huh. Where was it where we had something that we still haven't really explored? I guess the Runic Calls. Let's go there. And then... I think we have to look around a little bit to find the thing that we're missing. It was like one or two rooms where we couldn't access because we didn't have the right torch key, I think. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But now that we have more, perhaps we will be able to access these places? Uh, where was it? It's not here. It's not there either. So I'm guessing it's down here, maybe? Or is it this one? I actually don't remember. Let's see if it's that place. If not, we'll set to explore the other place, I guess. I do wish the loading screens were a little faster, but uh, I can't begrudge this game too much. They're relatively fast. Oh, you know what? It was the other place. This is just an extremely roundabout way of getting there. Damn it. I flipped a coin and I lost, okay? Can you hate me for that? I'm not asking you to hate me for that. Please don't hate me for that. That's not what I'm asking for here. Uh, let's see if this one first works. Actually, maybe we should leave the episode off here. Kind of like leave it, a, leave, it, leave it as a little cliffhanger slash teaser kind of thing. So yeah, let's do that. And we'll come back again in the next episode and find out if these places are now accessible to us. Anyways, so yeah. Let's leave it off here. So thanks for watching and have a good breakfast.